Oh, here you are. Only, what, 15 minutes late? Unusual way to start things off. What kept you? <laughs> you just didn't leave in time. What, and you forgot you had a date or something? <laughs> no, I dig it. I like knowing that you don't give a shit about this. Keeps things casual. Hmm. So, what are you drinking? I'll get the first one. You'll owe me after that, though. A dark and stormy. Okay. Nice choice. Keeping it real simple, though. It seems a shame to come to a bar and get that when you could just make it at home. And no, I, I mean, I'm not going to judge you for it, really. If that's what you want, then it's what you should get. Hmm. Nah. I just like to make the most of it when I come out for the evening somewhere like this. Test the bartender a little. As for something more complex. Oh, this? What I'm drinking now is a blues blazer. It's like a blue blazer, but made with cognac instead of whiskey. I'm not sure how cognac is supposed to turn blue into blues, but I didn't name the thing. A blue blazer? It's one of those ones that gets set on fire. Um... I'm not really sure what's in it, to be honest. That's why I get it at a bar instead of making it at home. I guess I could learn exactly what was in it and make it at home, but, you know, I'm lazy. Plus, fire. I don't really want to be messing around with that. <laughs> Good question. I wasn't sure why they set it on fire either, so I asked the mixologist here one time. No, apparently it's bogus. As in, it doesn't do anything to the flavour of the drink at all. At least for most cocktails. It just looks cool. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed too. Spoiled the magic of it a bit. Before, I assumed there was some kind of arcane reaction the fire set off that magically transformed the drink. But, well, it hasn't stopped me ordering the thing, so it kind of spoiled it too much. I guess I just like cognac. Oh, sure, yeah, try a bit. No, I don't care about your lips touching the glass. Do you care that mine have? I mean, we're going to be touching a lot more than that later this evening. No, I didn't think so. So, try some. <laughs> yeah, pretty good, right? Yeah, I have good taste, what can I say? Still, you enjoy your dark and stormy. Nothing wrong with it. I'll make you one when we get back to my place, and it'll be just the same. <laughs> what, am I joking about the drink being the same? No, it's literally two ingredients. Rum and ginger beer. It's almost impossible to fuck up. If I made you one at my place, it would be virtually identical to whatever they serve here. That is, if I have the same rum and the same ginger beer. And they probably just use Kraken. So, yeah, it'll be the same. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes, I was sort of joking about you having a drink at my place. I'm not that presumptuous. It might not happen. Hmm. But, you know, also I know what we're both here for. And I'm not going to pretend like we don't. At least, I hope I know what we're both here for. I know what I'm here for. What are you here for? Because, I mean, if you're on Tinder to find uh, true love, I think you're going to be sorely disappointed Um, I think it's for the same thing that most people think it's for. A quick fuck, right? You're on Tinder so you can meet an arsehole like me at a bar, be fucking him within 45 to 60 minutes, and then forget about it the next day. Mm hmm? Good. I'm glad we have some kind of mutual understanding about that. But still, I'm not going to be a complete arsehole about it. Only mostly an arsehole. Let's get to know each other a little bit before we drop the act completely. So, uh, do you read much? <laughs> no, me neither. I don't know why I asked. It was just the first thing that came into my head. Ah, yeah, well, sort of. It was the first question that came into my head uh, from the mental list of questions I refer to. You know, when I want to pretend that I'm asking about someone on a Tinder date. 
Hmm. Still, sometimes I get an interesting answer out of it. But most of the time, whoever I'm speaking with reads as little or less than I do, which is almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just something this generation is forgetting how to do. Our attention spans have been ruined by the internet. But fuck, who knows? Maybe it's just me. And almost everybody I happen to meet on nights like these. The last book I read, uh... I don't remember the title. It was like six months ago. Some autobiography, I think. I don't even remember whose autobiography it was. It was pretty good, though. A lot of juicy shit. Real deprived stuff. <laughs> no, fuck, I probably shouldn't talk about it on a date, or whatever you call what we're doing right now. It'd probably spoil the mood. It was just some really messed up Hollywood shit. You know the sort of stories you hear from there, about child actors in particular. Yeah, messed up. Made for a pretty engaging autobiography, but apparently not engaging enough that I remember who wrote it. <laughs> no, it's fine that you don't remember the last book you read. It's what I've come to expect. I'm not going to judge you for it. Besides, I didn't care anyway. I'll judge you for a whole load of other shit, but uh, not not reading. That's the norm now. For me, too. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What would I judge you for? I'd judge you for littering, but I guess most people probably would. I hope so, anyway. I'd judge you for being scared of roller coasters. I'd judge you for having bad political views. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not about to get into that. Not right now. Well, because I've learnt my lesson. I just want a casual fuck. But if we start getting into all that and it turns out you're a racist or a Tory or something, well, that'd kill the mood more than the appalling treatment of child actors in Hollywood. Or at least about the same amount. Oh, your drink's here. There you go. It took them kind of a long time, didn't it? Let me try a bit. Maybe they've done something fancy to it. <laughs> nope. That's just a regular old dark and stormy. Rum and ginger beer. That shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to prepare. Ugh. <laughs> ah, no. Not a big deal. I just, uh... I just don't like my time being wasted. But I guess we'd still be hanging around here now anyway. Even if you had got your drink right away. Mm, I used to get real anxious when I was waiting for my order to be taken or waiting for it to come out, you know. No, it doesn't get to me anymore. I've uh, mellowed out. Nowadays, at most, it just uh, bugs me a little when I'm left waiting. <laughs> I used to have this real silly fear of being forgotten about at restaurants. I don't think it ever actually happened. But as soon as it felt like I'd been waiting a second longer than I should be, I'd get all antsy. Uh, maybe I still have that feeling a tiny bit every now and then. But not normally. Hmm. So, do you do this sort of thing very often? This kind of casual stuff? Oh shit, really? This is your first time? <laughs> no, no, it's just always fun when I'm someone's first time. Uh, I don't mean I think you're a virgin, though shit, please tell me if you are. I just mean first time doing the whole casual sex thing. Yeah, like... When it's someone's first time doing it casually, it's like, uh, it's like I can live vicariously through them and get a bit more of the excitement back. Oh, don't get me wrong, it is still exciting in its own way, just even more so when I get to see it all through someone else's eyes, you know? That nervous energy, the exploration, the, the thrill from feeling like you're doing something even a tiny bit taboo. That's great. Mm. Well, it helps that you're hot. <laughs> sure, you got me. I do say something like that to everybody. But that's because I don't do this sort of thing with people who aren't hot. And 
Even if you work really hard to put misleading images on your Tinder profile, it's usually pretty obvious if you're hot or not. Oh, for sure, some people slip through the net occasionally, but it doesn't bother me too much. Most of the time, it's not that big a difference in attractiveness. Hmm. Uh, well, one time this guy looked completely different than his profile pictures, like a totally different person. Nothing similar about him at all. I was really sure that there had been some mistake and that I was on a date with the wrong person or that they were trying to catfish people or something. Oh no, we still fucked. The picture was generally just that he'd lost a lot of weight and changed his haircut, so I was like, why not, you know? He was there, and he was a sweetheart, actually, even if visually he wasn't my type. We stayed in touch for a little bit, but just as friends, fizzled out after a while. That's just the way of things. Hmm, yeah, I don't do this stuff expecting to make lifelong friends out of it. I've done it a few dozen times now, and I'm still in touch with, what, two people? Maybe three? Yeah, it's it's three. And of those three, only one is someone I'd really call a friend. The other two are, well, you know, <laughs> friends with benefits, I guess. Except without the friends part, just the benefits. <laughs> Forgive me. I hope you don't think it's strange that I talk about this stuff so openly. I just like to be really clear about what I'm here for and what you should expect so that there are no hurt feelings or anything. So, anyway, my drink's done and that was my second and I don't really feel like paying for another one. So, you want to come home with me? <laughs>